In the exam, you may be asked to draw the physis and explain the different layers of the physis and which particular conditions affect which layer. So first of all, I start off by drawing the epiphysis. And then I leave a space for the five layers of the epiphysis. And then I start to draw the metaphysis, which uh, first of all has the primary spongiosa the secondary spongiosa it splits into two layers, and then the metaphysis uh, down here. And then I draw the five layers of the growth plate. So at the top, you have your res reserve layer, uh, the zone of uh, proliferation. And then the last three zones are known collectively as the zone of hypertrophy which is the uh, weakest layer of the growth plate. And as the chondrocytes come from the epiphysis down to the metaphysis, they start to mature, they degenerate, and then they calcify. So you have the zone of maturation, the zone of degeneration, and the provisional zone of calcification. So here in the reserve zone, you mainly have uh, these very small resting germinal cells not many in number. And in this layer, particularly, you have the highest glycogen content. And as you progress down towards the metaphysis, you have the lowest glycogen content. So it goes from high to low. Um, and as it progresses down from the, the, the resting layer, um, the, they, they start to proliferate. So they actually just these, these germinal cells, uh, they, they turn to chondrocytes and they increase in number, but importantly, not in size. And in this layer, in particular, you have the highest concentration of oxygen, whereas the other layers have a relatively low concentration of oxygen. And, and on also the same for the hypertrophic layer, they have low oxygen concentration. Then these chondrocytes start to increase in size and as they increase in size they they actually increase fivefold in size and they start to accumulate um, calcium in their um, in, in in their extracellular matrix then going beyond that they start to degenerate and they they the, the cells die so they apoptose so uh, apoptosis occurs and the, the cells start to release their built up calcium, so calcium release. And then they continue to, to calcify. So, 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 so once, um, once they've released the calcium, the, the cells and the extracellular matrix, uh, it starts to calcify. So that's broadly speaking, the growth plate. Now, what, what particular conditions affect the growth plate, you, you largely only really need to know one or, or, or at most two conditions affecting each layer. So starting from the top, uh, you have pseudoachondroplasia. And then in the proliferative zone, you have achondroplasia. And that's pretty easy to remember that the first one's pseudoachondroplasia, the next one's achondroplasia. And then in the hypertrophic layer, because it's the weakest layer, you have um, your Sufi and your Salter Harris uh, fractures. Uh, but specifically to the provisional zone of calcification, uh, you have uh, rickets, or in adults, osteomalacia. Um, and in the primary spongiosa, you have acute uh, hematogenous osteomyelitis. In the secondary spongiosa, uh, you have a Sufi, but secondary to renal causes, so renal osteodystrophy, and also osteogenesis imperfecta. And also you have your uh, metaphyseal corner fractures occurring here as well. It's important to now at this point, let your examiner know that actually at the periphery of the physis uh, is also a very important structure. Um, namely a fibrous band at the periphery which he helps to um, anchor the periphery of the physis known as the perichondral ring of Lacroix 
and um, that's the that's the that's the role of the perichondral ring. But uh, on the inside, you have the groove of Ronvier, which supplies the periphery of the growth plate and is responsible for appositional growth. So the the the, the wide the, the the growth in in terms of the width of the growth plate. It's also important to note the, the blood supply. So you have the epiphyseal blood supply at the top and you have the metaphyseal blood supply at the bottom and they, they give, give vessels into uh, respectively the metaphysis coming from the bottom here and the epiphysis coming from the top. Um, so that's that's important to, to note as well. The last thing to mention is that your examiner may ask you why do Salt Harris 1 and 2 fractures have a better prognosis than Salt Harris 3, 4, 5 fractures? And um, th the reason is because, as, as I mentioned before, the hypertrophic layer is where the majority of your Salt Harris fractures propagate through because this is the weakest layer. Now, if you have a Salt Harris 1 fracture which goes through the hypertrophic layer or a Salt Harris uh, 2 fracture which takes a metaphyseal fragment and goes through the hypertrophic layer, it does not violate the resting or proliferative zone. Remember, the epiphysis is your secondary ossification center. And just below that, you have your resting and proliferative zone. And your resting zone is where your um, resting layer of germinal stem cells originate from. And this is the layer, along with the proliferative zone, um, where you have the most growth potential. Whereas in Salt Harris 3, where you go through the epiphysis, and Salt Harris 4, where you go through the epiphysis and the metaphysis, and a crush injury of Salt Harris 5, they all violate the resting and proliferative zone. So in summary, um, that's the growth plate and um, how you can clinically uh, apply it.